do is introduce people to all the basic concepts about pads. How we do pads, why we do pads, the variations on doing pad work. This way, whatever you're doing, whatever techniques you like, you can go away from them from here and, and learn how to integrate pads into whatever workout you're doing. Um, if Ian and I are working, right, if we spar, it's a great interaction of him attacking and me defending, me attacking and him defending. But we don't go full power. He's not going to punch me and kick me full power because we get injured. The thing about pad work is that he can hit this as hard as he wants. He can kick it as hard as he wants. He can knee it as hard as he wants without hurting me, which means that I can keep doing it. I can do it over and over and over again. But we can also integrate into the pad work, unlike a bag, say, different combinations where he has to respond, like he has to respond to me when we fight. He stands in front of a bag. If he just wants to throw a hook, he just keeps throwing a hook. When you fight, you can't throw a hook if there isn't an opening for a hook. You have to look for the opening. We have a saying here, which is that fighting is a conversation. I mean, it's not just one-way street. You've got to pay attention to what the other person is doing. So, for example, when we're doing pad work, I have the pads down most of the time. He has his hands up because he's pretending he's fighting. But he's waiting to see what the opening is. Is it jab? Or is it cross? Or is it hook? Or is it uppercut? He's responding, just like he responds to the openings I give him in a fight. We can move around. In other words, it's not just, it is usually movement. And then what we start doing, I'm going to go more and more and more into this, is we start including the defense, which is that just like a sparring session, I can hit him back. I can hit him, I can kick him, I can grapple with him. Let's go over some of the basic concepts, though. Some of the basic concepts in pad work is that we have a separate way that we hold the pads for every different technique. Sometimes you'll see, for example, this is cross. Sometimes you'll see gyms where this is also elbow. The problem with this is that when I hold it up, he's not sure whether I mean cross or elbow. When we're doing free pad work, not structured pad, we can structure it earlier. Right? And you can do a lot of structure. And there's nothing wrong with structured pad. When you first start off, you should do structured pad. Structured pad means you're going to do jab and cross hook. One, two, three. Move around. That's all we're doing. One, two, three. This is good because it's developing a basic. Once you have the basic techniques down, like Ian does clearly, then you want unstructured pad work, which is he doesn't know what's coming. Just like in a fight, he doesn't know what the opening is. So every technique is separate. Now what I'm going to basically do for the next five or ten minutes is go over the basic hold for every basic technique. That way when you want to review this later, you can look at it and you can see. He has his fighting stance. We already talked about jab. Jab is the left pad straight in, so he throws jab. We have cross. That's the right pad straight up. Hook is the left pad sideways so that he comes around. Most basic four punch in boxing, so the uppercut, in other words, the fourth punch in boxing, is here, up and underneath. It's a chin. That's what you're doing. You're giving him a chin to throw the uppercut underneath. All right, now, if he goes jab, cross, another good basic kickboxing or mixed martial art one is jab, and then elbow. Now, remember, I just said we don't want him to have to have a question about what the elbow is. So the way that we hold elbow here is, it's like the cross, except that I latch this one behind. And that's how he hits elbow. So come over here from a different angle. Jab, cross, jab, elbow. And this looks different, so he can identify it, but it also has another reason that I do it. The elbow is a short range weapon, and it's one that's going to hit real hard. I don't want to do this and have him miss and hit me with the elbow. By doing this, I'm putting a little bit more between him and, and his elbow and me. Okay. We have also other basic combinations. Jab, cross. If you put it in front of you like a countertop, that's right knee up and in and back. Jab, cross. For left knees, 
since he kind of scoots forward, I don't want to just do this. A lot of times when you just do this and he switches and left knees, he can hit you. He's nice and not trying to hit me, but when a person goes wham to get that penetration, you don't want to be just like this. So usually what happens is when we do left knee here, we step back and do this. That way he can really run in with that knee and really get the penetration and I don't get injured. So, jet, cross, boom. Up up. We got jab into elbow. We got jab, cross, knee. We got jab, cross, switch knee. For round kicks, you can do leg kicks. Depending on how hard he kicks, there's two ways you can do this. You can put it right here, and then you're going to probably do a lesser power kick. The good thing about this is, again, he's hitting exactly where he would hit in real life. In other words, when I do jab, I put it right in front of my face. When I do cross here, I don't want to do this. Jab over here, cross over here, because no head is this big. Right? Everybody you know, makes that mistake at the beginning, it's okay. But you got to like, try to make it. When I hold for a hook, I'm holding it so that it's just like the side of my face. Uppercut, I already said, it's like a chin. Me, I'm holding like my ribs. I don't want to hold it right on my ribs, so I don't think it's going to need my ribs. So I put it out a little here. Put it out a little here. Leg kick here. When he wants to develop power, I want to let him kick through so I can do it out here. Depending on how powerful he is, I may do this one, because then he can really cut through. Obviously, for this side, I have the same thing. You can do switch step, right? He can do switch step. Or if he kicks real hard, you can do switch step. It's going to less likely to make your elbow pop back. You'll have to play with these, and it depends also on who you're working with and how hard they hit. And also whether you're trying to incorporate more power into your workout or you're just working like light. Sometimes you want to work light and get a lot of fast combinations in. Sometimes you want to go slow one technique at a time and work more focus and power. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Um, jab, cross. For the body kicks, he's kicked, he kicked my ribs. Right? Don't kick me hard, but there. My ribs are not bent over, so I don't want to do this. This is wrong. I want it to be just like my ribs, so here. And then he comes in with the kick. Now again, I said that the beauty of the pad work is that he can throw that kick that hard, which he doesn't want to do in sparring. If he kicks me that hard in sparring, we're not going to spar right I'm not going to spar with him. So, jab, cross, you got your right kick. Jab, cross, you got your switch. Same thing, it's ribs on both sides. When you do side kick, now, some of my guys actually do this different. I yell at them because they do it just like you do front kick and then they get confused. If this is my ribs on the side, and this is my ribs on the side, this is my ribs on the front, and then he comes in side kick. So I can give him that fake jam into that side kick. Usually we follow that with cross. Jab, side kick, cross. Okay? Um, Front kicks, it will come around this way, get a different angle. You know, he wants to be able to push kick me every time I step in on him. Obviously, if I just step in on him, boom, it's going to make for a short pad session. So what I do for push kicks is I take the front pad, which is the left, and I stick it on my hip, and I lock the other one on top, and then this one he can push kick. So a lot of times I'll just come in on him, and he's just trying to keep me away with the push kick. He can follow that up if I hang out with the rear front kick. Yeah, foot jab thrust kick. If I hang around, he just follows that in. Um, if he bounces me off, I can give him a side kick. He can follow off of that. If he bounces me off and he wants to follow me, he can follow me with the right kick. He can bounce me off and follow me with that left kick. These are all pretty much the basic things that we do. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut, elbow, right knee, switch left knee, right kick, switch left kick, push kick, thrust kick, and side kick. Now, like I said, what we want to start doing as we start working the pads more and more is integrating the elements of the pad work. So he may jab, and I want to get used to the counter. So he jabs, and I'll hit him. 
jab, and I'll hit him, and he'll cover up, which we already talked about this weekend. Cover up. Cover up. And you notice how we use footwork and movement. As he's a little more comfortable, I can come in straight with the pad and parry. Parry. This is a. Notice I'm just doing this with jab. But you can do this with any combination. Let's say he goes jab cross. Walk. You can do jab cross knee. Any combination, you can just add in these pieces. The other thing that you start getting used to with the jab is me kicking him. That's why I put on the shin guards. Now, obviously, if you forgot to put the shin guards on, I would not recommend you kick back. Okay, when, when you want to do kicking, it's okay for him. He's not wearing shin pads because when he's doing pad work, he wants his bare shin to hit the pad. That's how he's going to condition his shin. By throwing that kick over and over again into that pad, now as he's developing power, he's developing a strong shin. But we don't want it when we're working the defense for him to go uh, bone to bone with me. So, you know, I'm wearing shin pads. He can go jab, cross, and I can throw the left kick, and he can block it. I can go jab, cross, and I can throw a body kick, and he can work his parry off of it. That was a good one. Jab, cross, I can go with this body kick. He can catch it. Do that one, and I'll give you a punch. To, 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 like, once you grab me, punch. He can incorporate every aspect of his game into the pad work. One, I'm going to go kick him, he's going to catch it, right? And then I can give him this one to punch, this one to punch this way. I can give him this for a knee. I can add in all kinds of things to this. It's just how creative I want to be. There's other things I can do. I can add in the wrestling, right? If you're doing sandha or you're doing mixed martial arts, you want to add in the wrestling. So he goes, jab, and I keep faking with my head, right? This is called level control. He never wants my head to get below his head. If I go down, he goes down. Right? Now, since people tend to get adrenalized when you do this, this is the way we practice blocking the shoot, and so that he doesn't knee me in the head. It's for me. He goes jab, cross. I'm going to go like this, so that he knows it's a shoot, and he doesn't just throw the knee and, and, and smack me in the head. I'll come down and in. When I come down and in, he uses his forearms, he uses the cage, he uses the shield to stop me from coming in. Cool. Now we can just do this and circle out, or I can start getting him to incorporate his countering off of this. He goes jab, cross, I come down and in. For example, here he can come, cross. He goes jab, cross, I shoot in, he blocks, and we come up, cross. We can do jab, cross, I can come in, he can push me off into kick. Jab, Cross, I come in, he can push me off in the left kick. You can incorporate all this. Though these are what we call half shoes. They're, they're short ones. They're the more common one you'll see. Sometimes you can find a really good wrestler, they get really down and in and you have to sprawl. I don't necessarily as a pad holder want to keep shooting in that low and having me sprawl and grind my face into the mat. So then we just have him basically do squat thrusts or sprawl without me. I just go one, two. I let him know that that's what he want, I want him to do by like going down on one knee. When I go down on one knee, he sprawls. He keeps looking at me. He pops up, and I pop up and we continue. So we can set the drill where I'm giving him random combinations. Block. Okay, he's getting out of the way. He doesn't know when it's coming. These are all elements that you can add into your pad work.